But the idea uh, that this government can produce growth over the next two years I mean, is ridiculous. The problem of the pension funds is they've taken out uh, insurance programs to try and protect themselves against future inflation. And when you've got this instability in the goods market, the, um, in order to protect their, um, their, their positions, they had to put up a great deal more collateral and they didn't have the money on hand and that led them to sell more in the markets, more public sector debt, and that drove prices further down. So you've got a vicious spiral, uh, and that had to be dealt with. Um, in fact, in my view, the bank ought to have seen this earlier. Uh, they should have realized when they took their position last Thursday that the situation was likely to be sufficiently worrisome in the goods market, that going ahead, as they planned then to do, uh, with their quantitative tightening was a mistake. Uh, they shouldn't have done that. Um, and, but they've, they've done a U-turn and a, a sensible U-turn, and they have uh, reduced the degree of nervousness and instability in the goods market, which is a very central financial market for this country. Mm. Um, and they've done the right thing. Uh, I might add that the, what has happened in the goods market and to mortgages uh, effectively means that the idea uh, that this government can produce growth over the next two years I mean, is ridiculous. ridiculous. I'm heading into a recession. Um, and not only we're heading into a recession, but that will make the public sector deficit even worse. Um, and you can say goodbye to growth uh, over the period from now until the uh, general election, if not further. Uh, so I'm going ahead with this growth plan. And the growth has already been overtaken uh, by the rise in interest rates, the reduction in asset prices, which are going to reduce wealth overall more than all the so-called tax giveaways that the Chancellor had in the budget before. Right, you've just, you've just described the government's plan and you've just told us that it's ridiculous. The, the, the Chancellor, as we know, is going to be setting out a, a plan. We still have to wait some weeks for it, but there will be a plan from the uh, the Chancellor, which will set out his supply side reforms, plans intended to uh, to increase the supply of labour to British business, something to uh, to reduce the burden of city regulation, something which is intended to deliver growth to the British economy and do it quickly. The, the message to Tory MPs is be patient because there's a plan and it will bear fruit. You're telling us that that is ridiculous. It can't be done on that on that time scale. Not at that speed. Not at that speed. Yeah. And there are things that you can do on the supply side which will improve growth, and some of the things they want to do will, in time, produce in, in improve growth. But it won't happen over the next year or two. Yes. And yes. what's yeah. more, what I think is really upsetting is the fact that the Chancellor is not going to produce a plan about how he's going to stabilise the public sector debt until November the 23rd. That effectively means that he went into the budget with no clear idea about how he was going to actually finance one of the largest giveaways uh, in financial history. And that is irresponsible. So, Charles, if that is, if that is correct, then the, the message that the Conservative MPs who are worried about the, the Chancellor's strategy must take away from your analysis is that their political position is frankly hopeless. They are told to hold on, there'll be reform of the, of the economy, there will be a, a supply side reforms on top of the tax cuts, and the government insists that those tax cuts will also stimulate economic growth. But you're telling me yeah, now, the, none, the, of, the, none the, of that, if I may, Charles, you're telling me none of that is the case, and it means... The interest the, rate increases, the interest rate increases yeah. uh, that are have already occurred and more that are coming down the line will more than offset the stimulatory effect of the budget. Yes. We are going into a recession. In which case, the uh, the the budget was not only economically reckless, I know you're an economist, not a politician, but you're also telling me pretty much it was politically suicidal. I don't think they quite appreciated the degree to which uh, people would... Uh, be upset about the sustainability of the British fiscal position. And they, I think that the, uh, I'm, virtually every economist I can think of um, I'm, uh, has taken that 
same view that I, this is a budget which did simply not consider the underlying fiscal position and how it would be dealt with over the medium and longer term. How can it be that a chancellor could deliver then the budget that he, the mini budget that he did, uh, given the the bleakness, the blackness of the prospects that you're sketching out for us now, and, and a lot of people have been have been uh, painting the same sort of picture. There are economists all over the treasury. Surely some of them must have been warning the chancellor of the dangers that you're setting out setting out to. The Bank of England must have been sending the same sort of message, and yet the the chancellor ploughed on regardless. Does that make any sense to you? Remember that they sacked somebody at the top of the Treasury who would have warned them. Yeah, they sacked the Tom's they did. Yeah, And they tried to do it. They tried to do it very fast. Uh, why they tried to do it so fast without sort of taking soundings about the overall fiscal and financial position, I don't know. Now, so then as a consequence of all of this, the Bank of England still has to do its job, which is to operate monetary policy to guard against inflation. It still has a target of 2% inflation. So we're now seeing a period then, aren't we, of, pol of political policy intruding in the bank's decision making. Can you think of any other time where it has been that in that way to this extent? Uh, it's all horribly reminiscent of the sort of the barber budget of going for growth in, I think it was 1973, uh, which ended up in tears. Um, but I find it very difficult to think of anything quite along these lines. Um, it's most unfortunate. Uh, it really is. Um, and it's not going to leave the situation happier uh, because we're going in for a period of recession, low growth. Uh, the public sector deficit will rise very, very sharply. Um, and I fear that the Chancellor will say that his medium term and longer term Sort of debt sustainability will be achieved by the miraculous growth that will occur over the longer term. Um, and uh, there's actually very, very little uh, that governments can do uh, to raise growth. There's a lot they can do to cut growth, uh, but there's not much they can do really to raise growth, uh, at any rate in the short run. Okay, so, well, that, again, another bleak analysis of the of the econ economic strategy. And just the last one on this: given the politics of the of the Treasury under the present Chancellor, how will that bear on Bank of England decision making? How will it change the decisions or the timing of decisions or the way that the bank does its job? It's very difficult to tell because um, I'm the Chancellor, and the Treasury must realise that if the bank raises interest rates sufficiently to bring inflation back to target in the reasonably near future, uh, that is within the next couple of two or three years, uh, it is going to lead to uh, a, a, a recession and very sharp falls in asset prices more or less everywhere, including housing prices. Um, I need, I need, He's really, I mean, there's really only two things they can do. Uh, the first one is say the hell with it. Damn all the fire, damn the torpedoes, we're going ahead. And more or less telling the Bank of England not to raise interest rates. Uh, the Erdogan Turkey policy uh, of you allow the exchange rate to decline very sharply. Um, you keep interest rates down or even ask them for them to be lowered in the hopes that the combination of supply side changes, uh, very sharp declines in the exchange rate uh, will lead to faster growth, although it will lead to much higher inflation, much higher inflation. That's option one. Option two um, is to say, uh, oops, we got it wrong um, and sort of go back and say, I'm terribly sorry under these circumstances, we can't go ahead with all these fiscal measures until we got the, the inflation situation under control, as Rishi Sunak indicated. Uh, my guess is that they'll go for option one and actually in time, uh, stop the Bank of England from raising interest rates enough uh, to bring inflation back to target. Uh